Hello world, oh, this is Wolfstar Games, it's Anton, and welcome back to more AI The Somnium Files. Uh, last time, things got weird. <laughs> I went through Iris's alternate uh, Somnium, and it got very abstract and interesting. Uh, but in the end, I feel like her Somnium was, is more abstract than uh, Mizuki's and uh, number 89's. Uh, at least I think so. And before we actually uh, get back uh, into the game here, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Because I have been thinking about... a. Uh, couple of things that uh, went on uh, last time. So, uh, first thing, I was thinking about how uh, with number 89's Somnium, with a boss showing up, of uh, how she wind up being there. And thinking about it, I'm like, Okay, wait. Number 89 in his story mentioned going to an old friend for help. So, process of elimination, I'm like, boss has to be that old friend. It's like, I think I got that now. That, and that makes sense with his backstory, you know, being a detective in his, I guess you could say, previous life now. And with, and then two, with Iris's uh, alternate Somnium that I went through, when it got to the end with the figure kissing So Sejima, in editing, I noticed when the camera panned across that the so so Sejima's body has a pair of ample breasts. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not so 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 uh, so uh, so Sejima, Sejima. It's like, I cannot say his name. That can't be so Sejima if the body has breasts. Unless he's hiding a pair of breasts under that kimono. <laughs> but I don't think that's the case. I, I think Iris's uh, Somnium on uh, you know both sides of it are very are both very abstract. I re remember what I was saying before of how your mind can play tricks on you even when you're dreaming. And the same goes with memories as well. I mean, the pieces of your memory can be missing. So it's like trying to piece everything back together it's like not everything is there. So with So Sojido having breasts at the end of that Somnium, I'm like, wait, if it's not so, who else do we know other than the receptionist at Lemnisgate who has ample breasts? That would be boss. So if the fi if the body is boss, she, the bo boss can't be the figure, or the figure can't be boss. It's like got that switched around, uh, and so trying to th you know think it all through. I'm like, so if. If the 
body is boss and the Cyclops killer was kissing her, then who's the Cyclops killer? And I'm still, uh, and with that, I'm still sticking to my guns that the Cyclops killer is uh, Date. I mean, e- even though with number 89's like confession, his story, you can't help but feel, I can't help but feel that uh, Date is part of that story somewhere. But, you know, 89 is, like, holding back information. At least, that's how I feel. I mean, we saw with Iris's Somnium, her, with the murder part of it, watching the murder, in the mirror, we saw Date. So, if... Date was there. Who is the other figure? What was it? Number eighty nine, maybe. I mean, I feel like that has some possibility to it. I mean, I don't really know for sure, but that's what my gut is telling me. But it anyway with. With Date being the Cyclops killer, I feel like that makes some sort of sense seeing uh, some of the facts about the Cyclops killer. You know, with the Cyclops killer being uh, all about, like, females. Date is all about females. I mean, we saw him trying to hit on... Uh, the receptionist. So I, I, f- I feel like the 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 pieces are kind of coming together in, in, in a little slowly, but I feel like every piece of information has been coming together fairly neatly. At, at least I think so. I mean, it's this. The mystery in this game is so intricate, I feel. And I, I and I really like mysteries. It gets my brain really working, really thinking. And I like to try and figure out what is going on and who the killer is before everything is revealed to me. I mean, that... I guess that's just part of the nature of me liking uh, mystery stories. And probably, and also probably because of the fact that I myself am a writer. So, but anyway, those are the things that I wanted to talk about. So we'll uh, finally get back to it here. Alrighty. It's like some pretty serious stuff happened. Why did I get a couple of repeats there? That was weird. Hmm. Huh. Alright, last we actually left off, we were about to... Uh, question Iris here. Okay, Iris. Iris looks a bit hazy. Let's see, uh, how are you feeling? Do you know a politician named So Sejima? Do you remember your dream earlier? How are you feeling? I'm okay. Normal, I guess. Why? Did you do something that would make me sick? No. I just took a peek inside your head is all. Inside my head? Yeah, is that okay? Let's see, uh, do you remember your dream earlier? Dream? What are you talking about? Yeah, she she really doesn't have any idea, does she? 
The subject of the sink does not experience Somnium as you do. Right, I, I remember that, but it, it, I just find it interesting that the person who is being synced doesn't actually experience the sink. You'd think that they would. Iris would not know about it. Hmm. Yeah, I know his name and face. I mean, he's a public figure. I'm much like Iris, but just in, you know, a different capacity. I've never met him. You haven't? I'm just an internet idol. It's not like I have connections to politicians or anything. Oh, I mean, that's... That's fair. I mean... <laughs> about the Nile message with Ota. Iris, let me ask one thing. The message Ota sent you on Nile. I won't tell anyone about that I thing. I won't tell anyone about that thing. What is that thing? Iris, come on. I don't know. I know she's holding back on me. I know she is. Ota's the one who wrote that. Well, yes, but you know too. You should ask him. Iba, Ota's phone is still broken, right? But he definitely sent that Nile message. Ota purchased a new phone in Akihabara yesterday. With the same number? Yes. Call it. Connected. Thank you. Hey, it's Konami Date. Where are you? Are, are, are we actually doing FaceTime here? <laughs> Ota, I know you can hear me. It's like, Ota, talk to me. At home. I'm at home. Where are you at home? It's like, it, it's like pitch black behind you. Or, or are you lying to me? Got it. Wait right there. I'm coming over. Is Tessa still at the police station? Yes. Yes. If you want me to talk... Release her. It doesn't work that way, Ota. Criminal procedure law number 198. You know criminal procedure law rules? Persons may refuse to heed a summons or leave the supervision of the police at any time unless they are arrested or detained. Tessa isn't a suspect. According to Article 223, this applies to all persons of interest. Why does Ota know these? You haven't issued an arrest warrant for Tessa, right? So if you don't release her right now, you are violating the law. <sighs> Damn. Hmm. Do we have a deal? You want my testimony, right? Bring Tessa here. And I promise I'll tell you everything I know. Everything? You won't hold back on me? This kid is starting to get on my nerves. Same. <laughs> so, what are you going to do? Shit. <sighs> Iris? Head to Mat Matsushita Diner. Iris, come with me. We're going to Matsushita Diner. Were you talking to Ota? Yes. Like, did, did you not hear him? Yeah, telepathically. Telepathically? <laughs> I have special powers. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. 
Anyway, let's go. It's like I Iris is not impressed. <laughs> Kinda late to be going here. Tessa! Thank you, Ota. It's thanks to you. That's right. It's not like you can do whatever you want just because you're the police. Maybe not. But you better keep your promise. Yeah, uh, let me see. I just want to look at the flowchart here real quick. Okay, I am here. Zoom in on it. Okay. Ongoing. Okay, so, yeah. So, if there's a branch, then it... All, all uh, open ends are cleared. So when I do uh, this one again and go down this path, then uh, the leads will all be done with. Okay, so this branch has to give me the answers that I need for this top branch. And I... I keep flipping forgetting to look over my case notes so oh god I, I haven't looked at these in quite a while so th this may take uh, uh, some time here but on the phone there it's like it's like yes I, I would like to order a pizza <laughs> all right so Sejima he is 60 years old he looks good for his age a birthday is December 7th. Profession congressman likes authority, fame, and assets. Dislikes anything that threatens the above. Of course. <laughs> Hobbies, mahjong. Golf, nishiki carp breeding. Interesting hobby. The skills grasping people's weaknesses by the balls. <laughs> Yeah. Applying pressure and making them obey. <laughs> Overview. Uh, so is a member of the post-war generation. He grew up poor, which gave him two things. His motivation for seeking power and wealth, and his vindictiveness toward the upper class. He has a vindictiveness toward the upper class. That could make him a problem. Momo Kumakura, 48 years old, September 28th is his birthday. Kumakura boss is his profession, likes humanity and justice, chivalry, Gandhi, he likes Gandhi, huh, pandas, and women. I feel like he would get along with Date in that respect. <laughs> uh, dislikes old-fashioned and irrational traditions. Huh. So so he likes he likes keeping up with the new stuff then. Hobbies, wa uh, watching dance. A as someone who doesn't really like the dance, I can actually get behind that. It's like I I would much r rather watch people dance than dance myself. Collecting art. Hot Springs Vacations. I wouldn't exactly call that a hobby, but okay. Skills. Uh, shooting. Magic tricks, really. And beatboxing. <laughs> okay, uh, now I want to hear Momo beatbox. <laughs> uh, Momo became the leader of the Kumakura Yakuza, Yakuza gang after his predecessors stepped down several years ago. Hmm. They keep saying that Rohan 
committed suicide, but here they say that after his predecessor stepped down, not committed suicide. So that just ma that just makes me even more suspicious that Rohan didn't actually commit suicide, that it was all premeditated. In the past, the Kumakuras were known for being ruthless and violent, but Moma hopes to make the group more peaceful and business-minded. Huh. Really? He sure was kind of giving Date the workaround, but his, like, his goons were being violent. And he didn't exactly stop them either, so I don't know uh, about that. Rohan Kumakura, uh, he was uh, 53 by the time he... Uh, I'm putting this in air quotes. When he died. <laughs> Birthday is January 28th. Uh, 18th, excuse me. Profession, a uh, previous Kumakura boss, likes guns, drugs, money, women, and power. All very stereotypical of uh, someone who is in that kind of profession. Uh, dislikes betrayal, rival gangs, and cops. Yet he worked with a cop. So that's questionable. Uh, hobbies. Politics. Investment fraud. Organ trading. Organ trading? Like human organs? Jeez. And land speculation. Hmm. Skills. Torture. Alrighty then. Uh, Rohan used to be the leader of the Kumakura gang. One year ago, he committed suicide by jumping from the roof of a building. Or so we are being led to think, I'd say. He was known for his horrific torture technique of peeling his victim's skin from toe to thigh. Good lord! Jesus! Ugh! Okay. Wow. Note to self. Don't mess with someone who likes to peel people's skin. Ugh. Number 89. Dang it. I was really hoping we would find out his real name by looking at his, his profile here. Age, early 40s. We don't even know his precise age. Or his birthday. Everything is literally unknown about him. A mysterious inmate currently serving a life sentence at Fuchu Prison for murder, known only as Number 89. I, I, I can only assume that, you know, further on down the line, we will find out exactly who is Number 89. You know, his name. What what his likes and dislikes are, his hobbies, skills, you know, everything that's listed here, basically. And he says that he was a, you know, detective before he started working for the Kumakuras, but yet it's not shown here under profession. I mean, they could have had, like, detective and in parentheses, formerly. But oh well. Yakuza A, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, this guy's name is Chinpei Wagai. Chinpei, interesting name. Uh, 24 years old, uh, birthday September 14th, Kamakura gang member, likes ass. Oh, okay. Um, no comment. Erotic novels. And his boss. Of course he likes his boss. <laughs> Dislikes police. His big brother. Hmm. 
and also dislikes animal cruelty. Well, that that makes him a bit better in my opinion. It's like that animal cruelty is awful. Hobbies, training dogs, skills. Won a dog training contest. Huh. Hmm. It's, it's kind of not all that bad, it seems. He is the lowest ranking member of the Kamakuras. He once had dreams of pursuing the top spot in the gang, but has since decided that he would rather focus on training his favorite dog. Aww. <laughs> Is his, is his dog a, uh, a, a pit bull, like, on his shirt? I bet it is. <laughs> Yakuza B, or uh, Dokuta, Dok, Dokuta, Yogano. Age 42, it's a significantly older than Chinpei. <laughs> March 14th is his birthday. Well, oh, it likes dominatrixes? Ooh. Alrighty. <laughs> it's like, I, I bet he likes getting whipped by them. <laughs> uh, dislikes domestic violence. Hobbies, dissection. Ah, okay. Like, uh, um, dissecting what exactly, though? Skills, uh, suturing. Uh, that, that's a good skill to have. Uh, perhaps due to the way he looks, he is often mistaken for a low-ranking member even though he is toward the top. He typically does office work. He has recently fallen in love and lost a lot of weight. Huh. Who did he fall in love with? And the receptionist. <laughs> uh, Ritsuko Enshu. Interesting name, Ritsuko. Or in Japanese, that would be pronounced uh, Ritsuko. Ritsuko, if I'm not mistaken. And just like she said, she's 36. Uh, birthday's June 22nd. Uh, Lemnus Gates receptionist likes yellow spotted river turtles. That's very that's a very specific uh turtle. <laughs> Dislikes men that act like ballers but are actually scrubs. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and she uh, she likes to gamble and she likes to party. Yeah, she, she does look like a party girl. <laughs> kind of surprised on the gambling one. The skills, anti-aging techniques. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call that a skill, really. She's Lemnus Gates receptionist. She likes men that are real bros and can vibe with them from the jump. Alrighty. Uh, lately, her shoulders have been stiffening up on her, though. Which I believe is common for women who have large breasts. And let's see. I imagine I have quite a few here to read, so I'll go through these as quick as possible. Uh, Evolver. Exciting Voltaic Versatile Handgun. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Date's weapon can fire a number of different kinds of bullets, such as explosive, flame, spherical, and wire rounds using electromagnetic force. It's very sci-fi. <laughs> uh, Pewter invented it at the request of Aiba and Date. Huh. K.E. Association. Kumakura Estates. The name Mama gives to the real estate companies under the Kumakura umbrella. Endorphins. Endogenous morphine released in the brain, relieves pain, calms nerves, and creates a feeling of euphoria. <laughs> oh, uh, totally unrelated to dolphins. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> savior. Ota said that Tessa is his savior. 
Maybe some people reacted to this line by thinking, What? Isn't that a little extreme? I... I would think that as well, actually. <laughs> Iris hasn't saved the world or anything, and she's not a... a Samaritan. I almost said that completely wrong. Uh, but the people who are in trouble, people who are in a bad place in life, someone like Iris can be a savior. And that's what matters. Oh yeah, um... It's like someone to... Iris is someone who can lift other people's spirits. That's... That's how... Ota sees her as his savior, right? Client. An ant familiar with command line user interfaces. An ant? What? A uh, collage. To glue in French. An art form that involves combining various materials such as printed paper, cloth, wires, wood pieces, sand, leaves, etc. Pewter describes dreams as a collage of memories. And that, that's a really good way to put it, actually. It sort of reminds me of a Mormon bubbles? Mormon bubbles? What? <laughs> Tell someone you love to image search it. Alright. Huh. Judge, jury, and executioner. What F believed himself to be. Generally, generally a phrase that describes someone with total authority and the determination. Some would call it arrogance to carry out to carry it out not all that dissimilar to boss hmm that that just leads me more to think that boss is the one that is the is uh 89's old friend juro a kind of ramen the broth is heavy with pork fat, then piled high with thick-cut noodles, cabbage, meat, and whatever else the customer desires. Oda eats Juro ramen at Juro's. Standalone. Unaffiliated or able to exist entirely without any other entity. Closely tied to the idea of independence. Kawasaki District. That's a good picture of uh, Sosajima there. Sosajima currently resides in Azabu. However, he is currently not running for office in the Minato district, where Azabu is located, but instead in the Kawasaki district, where he was born and raised. Candidates are allowed to run for any constituency, regardless of where they live. Dopamine, one of the neurotransmitters present in the central nervous system, involved with pleasant feelings, motivation, and learning new information. Internet Cafe. Sometimes called net cafes or PC cafes. Originally, these were simply cafes that featured internet connected computers, but modern Japanese internet cafes also feature private booths. Private booths, really? Huh. A mini feature manga, magazines, and waitresses. Similar to a manga cafe. Manga cafe? That's a thing? Bo the booths are typically 10 by 10 feet and walled in by tall partitions. Booths sometimes have a reclining chair and matted floors, perfect for reading manga, browsing the internet, napping, or watching videos. <laughs> napping. <laughs> Posterior pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is part of the endocrine system that hangs on the lower part of the brain. Not to be confused with the anterior pituitary. P pituitary. Primarily secretes oxycot, oxycotin. Oxytocin, excuse me. <laughs> it's, it's like, say the right word, damn it. <laughs> peptide hormone. A hormone, a hormone with a peptide bond. A peptide bond is a bond that occurs when the Carboxyl group of a molecule, uh, COOH, reacts with the amino group of another molecule, NH2, which generates water, H H2O. It has nothing to do with energetic tides. Energetic tides, what? 
Now that we're all caught up with that. Oh, there's a photo. There's a family photo. With and with the Ota's mom and dad. Are we ever gonna meet his dad? I bet I can talk to Iris too, can't I? Yeah. Uh well he came here to talk to Ota, but I guess I guess we also need to talk more to Iris. Well, let's talk to Ota first, I guess. Let's see. Uh, did I keep you waiting? I was nervous thinking about Tessa. I couldn't stop imagining what dirty, perverted dojin plots you were acting out with her. Ota, calm down. I didn't do anything to her. As long as I am in your eye socket, that won't happen. <laughs> Wouldn't happen anyway. Uh, because uh, Iris is uh, too young? Let's see, uh, I guess you bought a new cell phone. Yeah, I did. Yesterday in Akihabara. Uh, where is your mother? She's in the living room in the back. I think she's watching TV or something. D does she know that we're here? If she, if she knew that Iris is here, she would be flipping her lid. Seeing that she doesn't like her. Okay. Did you come all the way here just to ask me that? No. About that thing in the Nile message. So let's hear it. What is that thing? That thing? Don't play dumb. You sent that message to Iris. Thanks. Spell it, Ota. Oh, um... So many dots. <laughs> Date, will you do me a favor? A uh, favor? What kind of favor? What? There's a picture on the counter, right? You're not gonna get the drop on me again, Ota. Not after you tased me. Yeah, and? I want you to take a good look at it. The photo. What are you up to, Ota? Yes, the photo. <laughs> Not again. Damn it, Ota! Ugh! You little shit! You 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 die, <laughs> or you'd AI. I should have talked to Iris first. God dang it! Ugh. My head is pounding. Ota, you're on my shit list now. What time is it? The day has turned over. It is Monday, 2.50 a.m. You've been unconscious for nearly five hours. Isn't that even longer than compared to when Ota tased him? Ota got me, didn't he? Yes, he did. Again. He did. He struck you over the head with the walk. I I guess you could say 
Ota can walk the walk. <laughs> ah, little bastard. Why did he do that? I don't know. But afterward, he ran off with Iris. Again. God damn it. How do you know? You had lost consciousness, but I was still watching. Yeah. It's like... It's like, Iris this time. Iris? No, Iba. Iba this time wasn't affected. I recorded video of the incident. Take a look. <sighs> Thank God for small favors. <laughs> Let's see what happened here. Tessa, wait. Uh, I'll get the car. You witch! Oh. You, you stay away from my boy! Tessa! What's wrong? Did something happen? No, everything's fine. Okay, let's go. What did Iris oh, say or do? <laughs> Why didn't you chase them? I really wonder what Iris said or do. Ah, oh, man, I really want to know now. And, and how would I have been able to chase after them? Come on, Date. I'm sorry. You should have jumped out of my eye and ran after them. <laughs> now I just have this mental image of Iva just plopping herself out of his eye socket and just in her little cutesy form and just waddling after them. <laughs> it's a really funny image. I couldn't move. You couldn't. The mechanics controlling my ambulatory motion were short-circuited by the blow to your head. Huh. Okay. So she was sort of affected. <sighs> Date, the boss is calling. Oh, how am I going to report this one? Date, listen. Stay calm, but this is an emergency. Just now, the killer... Well, just watch the video. Are we going to get the same thing as before? Or is it going to be different? I sent the address to Iba. No, same thing as before. Great. Iris. I can't skip through it, though. Well. No, that's... Though, the, the, though there was a prompt for me to uh, skip that particular part with the circle button, but as as far as like actually skipping like the dialogue, there's no uh, there and there's no skip option. The criminal is streaming this live. Iva, the source. Identified. The Okiara Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse, Koto District. Interesting that this is all the same from before. Okiara? Date, focus. We need to get to the site, now. <sighs> that sick bastard! Hold 
on! I'll save you! Ota! Stay away from Tessa! Uh! Date, we've almost reached the destination. Please, please let me make it in time. Oh, it, it, a little different you here. okay? Date. Where did they go? Through the back door. Just hang on, Ota. Help is on the way. Don't worry. Iris is alive. That's good. Backup is en route to this location. Date, pursue the culprit. All right, I'm on it. I thought we were just going to get the exact same thing as last time, but not quite. Okay, that that's good. It's like that this branch should be a little different. Any traces of the culprit? It's like didn't find them. Still nothing. It's like, who was it? At this point, I feel like it could have been anyone, but I do kind of have my suspicions. It's especially f with, like, the other branch. We know that, like, Boss is capable of killing people, but at the same time, both Iris and Ota this time did not die. Maybe it's someone else this time. But I'm not sure who would do it exactly. Hmm. We also didn't catch the culprit on any of the surveillance cameras. That seems kind of fishy, doesn't it? It's like they would have to know where the surveillance cameras were to not be picked up by them. They probably got away through the back alley. While wearing a polar bear costume. <laughs> a polar bear costume would definitely stick out. <laughs> Maybe they took it off and threw it in the ocean. If it were filled with something heavy, it would sink to the bottom. Yeah. Alright, boss, what do you got for me? Let's see, about the Okiora fishery. Has CSI found anything in the warehouse? About so, about Iris and Ota. Uh, about Iris and Ota. They were taken to Central Hospital. Ota's surgery went well. He's in treatment now. That's good. It's like, got him pretty good, it looks like. He's stable. Nothing life-threatening. That's good. Iris, though. Is she still in surgery? Yeah. Iris's left eye was forcibly removed. And while she was still alive... Mmm... But at least she's still alive. At least they're both still alive. So at least that's a little uh, glimmer of hope there. Because the optic nerve is connected to the brain, the surgery will take some time to complete. Mm. Have you contacted Hitomi and Mayumi? 
I'm sure they have been contacted. Of course. Hitomi is at the hospital, waiting for the surgery to finish. And Mayumi? She was at the hospital earlier, waiting for Ota to get out. I think she went back home to get some clothes and things for Ota's hospital stay. Date, last night, Mayumi left the diner to chase after Iris and Ota. Oh. She went to chase after them. It's like, how far did she get? Perhaps she knows something. Yeah. Yeah, she might. Hmm. Let's listen to Mayumi's story. Huh. Okay, that that's... That, that could definitely be something... There could definitely be something there with Mayumi that could be very... Uh, very worthwhile and be very important to what happened. Hmm. I want to hear from a representative of Okiura Fishery. I don't recall getting this one before. They're giving statements at HQ right now. The line is pretty long. Really? You could just talk to Mizuki. I mean, would she really know anything, though? Right. She's part of the Okiura family, too. I mean, yes, but still. Oh, speaking of. Hey, boss. Did you end up sending anyone to take care of Mizuki yesterday? Oh, that's right. He had to leave Mizuki in Mama's care. Jeez, you're finally getting around to asking that? <laughs> yes, she's fine. I had one of our new recruits take her. Okay. She took her back to your house, so Mizuki should still be there. So Mizuki's at home. It's like, has she heard the news yet? And I'm fairly certain she's furious with you. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. After leaving her alone with Mama, I mean. Right. Uh, about so. So, Sejima? He was in Iris Asomnium yesterday. See what I mean? He has breasts there. Right. But Iris says she's never met him. Why not ask So about it? So lives in Azabu, right? Yes. I guess I could. Has CSI found anything at the warehouse? It's still ongoing, but they haven't found anything of note yet. Date, Aiba, go to the warehouse again and investigate. I mean, I had to do that the first time, but okay. You two might be able to find some useful clues. I should go investigate. All right, boss. I'm going to investigate all this. Got it. We're counting on you. Let's go, Iva. Roger that. Alrighty, let's go. Okay, so... Nearly all the same places as before. The only difference is we now have Central Hospital as a place to go to. I take it the cold storage warehouse will be like a lot of the same stuff. So I'll get this one out of the way. I may just like cut ahead though if it's if this is a lot of the same stuff. Two cars. 
Okay, th this is uh, slightly different here. Two cars, huh? These cars have been parked here since before 3.17 a.m. One van and one station wagon. Okay, so I guess the van first. Who owns the van? The Matsushita family. Oh. It appears as though it was used for transporting ingredients and supplies. Tessa, wait. Uh, I'll get the car. Ota's fingerprints were found on the steering wheel and gear shift. Yeah, uh, it's like that's how Ota got here. Iris's fingerprints were found around the passenger seat. Yeah, we uh, we didn't get we definitely didn't get this last time. Uh, it's like uh, the previous time. I, were there cars here? I can't remember. Those were the only prints recently made. Was there anything else found inside the car? There was one thing. What was it? Ota's cell phone. He left it behind? The one he purchased two days ago in Akihabara. It slid under the driver's seat. Oh, he must not have noticed then. He didn't leave it in intentionally. Where's the phone now? Its data is being inspected and evaluated. For any clues? Who's the station wagon belong to? This station wagon is a stolen car. Okay, it's a stolen car. It was stolen by the culprit? Stolen? Last night, the owner of the vehicle reported it stolen. Who's the owner? It was stolen at 10.33 p.m. yesterday. The theft occurred in Fuchu, Tokyo, in the parking lot of Famisto, a convenience store along Koshu Highway. Famisto. That's an interesting name. <laughs> like whenever I say that's an interesting name, I, names fascinate me, so it, any kind of unique names like that, I'm just like, oh, interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> That's that's just how I react to n to names like that. The Famisto parking lot, huh? The car was stolen while the owner was shopping inside the store. The vehicle's engine was on. Wait. The the vehicle's engine was on when it was stolen? So the the owner of the car left it running? Why would they do that? The doors might have even been unlocked, which would have made the theft easy for the culprit. Right, yeah. Especially since it was running, right? Who took the car? Do we know? Does Iba know? Ota Matsushita. Wait, what? What? Oto got into the car and drove off. The security cameras at the convenience store caught the entire incident. Oto's fingerprints were also found on the steering wheel of that car. There is no doubt that it was Ota. Then if Ota is the one who stole this car, How do you explain Ota's fingerprints on the steering wheel of the van? The stream of the polar bear started around 3 a.m. Correct. About 10 minutes later, Ota appeared on screen. Ota stole the car at 10.33 p.m. Way ahead of time of when this happened. That makes four and a half hours until he appeared on screen.
I cannot find anything in the vicinity that could be a clue. Hmm. Me either. Let's check inside the warehouse. I'm gonna get a lot of the same stuff in the warehouse, aren't I? Wow, it's cold in here. The air conditioners have stopped. However, the insulation in the walls has kept the room temperature close to what it was this morning. And I should finish this investigation before I freeze to death. <laughs> well then, you had better get started. Okay, so the one consistency between the warehouse now uh, as compared to the warehouse in the other path is that this bloodstain is in the same spot. This must be Ota's blood. That's where he was stabbed and went down. Aren't you cold? Yeah, some engineer from NRIPS created a jacket lined with heating wires. That would be very, a very useful jacket. That yeah, keeps me warm. Nice, right? Yeah. All the cops and inspectors around here are wearing them. Any progress on the investigation? I checked this place point by point, but didn't find nothing. That machine is used to cut ice. We have gathered testimony from the workers regarding it. So what did they say? This has always been in the warehouse, so the suspect did not bring it here. Okay. Any fingerprints? Nothing. No fingerprints have been found at the scene at all. But Ota put his hand on the lever shouldn't his fingerprints be on the lever this entire warehouse is clean I see shops packed with cardboard boxes I asked the cop on the scene and he said there wasn't anything special in them there's a dark spot over there the shadows on the left catch my eye huh this is slightly different. A shadow. Look. It's dark over there. Is it of concern? Maybe. Yeah, but without some light, I can't see. I am perfect for times like this. <laughs> L3. <laughs> what do we got here? What is that? Square object. Huh, there's something there. You should go pick it up. What is that, like a wallet? Huh, I recognize this. An Odoroki Man chocolate. Chocolate? You've been collecting them for three years. Each chocolate contains a special sticker inside. Years ago, you started buying them for Mizuki, but eventually, you got hooked on them. <laughs> I mean, I would get hooked too. I mean, it's chocolate. I can have a major sweet tooth when it comes to chocolate. Even after Mizuki lost interest, you kept buying them. That's a bittersweet memory. <laughs> the Odoroki Man chocolate. Why is this here? Yeah. I mean, someone drop it? Perhaps we can use it as a clue. Let's investigate further. Gesundheit, <sighs> Date. Ah, <laughs> <clears throat> oh, it's freezing. Date, we're at our limit. We've examined everything of interest here. Let's go elsewhere. Okay. I agree. All right, well, I guess off to mm. 
Let's go to the Matsushita Diner. I really want to know what happened between Mayumi and Iris. I'm really curious. And why Mayumi chased after them. Um, who might you be? We've met, Mayumi. Oh, I suppose I should introduce myself more formally. Did, did 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 they not introduce themselves to each other before? At least something a little more than flashing your badge. My name is Konami Date. Mr. Date, what can I help you with? Well, I want to talk to you about what happened last night. Uh, let's see, uh... Well, before I choose last night, I, I feel like that's the most important one. About that photo. Oh, this? As Mayumi spoke, she turned the photo toward me. This is a family photo from when Ota was still small. Hmm. <laughs> Can't even make out his father's face. It, it looks like he's, like, really squinting. <laughs> I wanted to look at it again. Hmm. <sighs> I'm a horrible mother. Uh, no, you're not. I've always caused trouble for my husband and Oda. They've helped me so many times. I am such a burden. But I've heard that line too many times in video games. It's like you're not a burden. They were always smiling. They were so kind. I remember a gift they gave me one Mother's Day. Oh yeah? What was it? They knew how much I liked floral patterns. Uh, that's very clear uh, with the apron that you always wear. <laughs> so they gave me this apron and a kitchen knife. Oh, I was so happy. <laughs> uh, good memories. It's like, no, no heavy hearts here, just, you know, good memories. I was crying and smiling and... That's what this photo is from. Hmm. It's kind of embarrassing, but isn't it such a nice photo? It is. Yes, that's very nice, Mayumi. Hmm. Uh, where is your husband? It's like, are we ever going to meet him? Oh, who knows? Who knows? It's like, where is he? Date, I did some research on her husband, Ota's father. Oh yeah, what, what'd you get? His name is Matsushita, Takaro. Takaro, okay. He has a weird looking face. He... Honestly... Honestly, it looks like he... His head is like a person's toe, just with a face painted on it. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> he died of myocardial infarction five years ago. Oh. I don't know what that is, but I'm sorry to hear that. What? What is going on here? Actually, real quick here. 
Is that in the appendix here? Uh, let's see. No, it isn't. Uh, may, uh, maybe... It's like, do, the, do these update after I've been somewhere and not as I get them? That, that's, that's probably it, isn't it? Let's see, uh, are you done packing? Packing? What are you talking about? I thought you came here to pack some of Ota's things for his hospital stay. Ota? At the hospital? Yeah. My boy's fine. Um... Mayumi? Your boy is in the hospital. You shouldn't say things like that to a mother. Is she in denial? About the Oraraki man chocolate. Just to be sure, I decided to ask Mayumi about the Oraraki man chocolate I found at the warehouse. I took it out of my pocket to show her. Do you know anything about this chocolate? Oh, you like Odoroki Man? Yes, actually. I was hooked on them at one point. And you still are, right, Dante? <laughs> My Ota loves them too. But he's not the one who dropped this, is he? When he was younger, he used to collect all the stickers. He was the best at it. About last night. Last night? What time? Oh, around the time when I was unconscious on the floor and Iris was here and your son, you know, just skedaddled off into the night. Before 10 p.m. Oh, I was already asleep by 10. Mm, no, you weren't. It's like that. With what happened, that was just like right before 10 and she was still, she was still up. You were sleeping? That can't be. You left the diner to chase after Ota and Iris. I saw the whole thing with my own left eye. Left eye? Yep. Not both your eyes? <laughs> my left eye, not both of them. Uh, well... Anyway, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't go anywhere last night. She's either in denial, or she's protecting her son. I was asleep. I was dreaming. You are not dreaming. I'm sorry. Dreaming? Yes. A very nostalgic dream. What kind of dream? I... F I... F Why do I feel like this is leading up to going into her somnium. It was when my son had just started elementary school. I had Oda run an errand for me, and he was taking so long, and I was waiting. My husband said it was nothing to worry about, but I couldn't take it anymore and went to look for him. I found him at a traffic signal, crying. Hmm. He said he couldn't come home because the signal was still red. <laughs> but 
but it was one of those crossing signals you have to push. Yeah. <laughs> that boy didn't even notice it. He just stood in front of that red light. So stubborn. So stupidly honest. Hmm. Ah, that's my Oda. He was so cute. I couldn't help it. <laughs> Date, I noticed something. What'd you notice? Can you look at Mayumi with the thermal imaging turned on? She's lying. Clearly. I can tell that just by talking to her. <sighs> thermal. Uh, actually, she's completely calm. Do you see it? Part of her brain is blue. Actually, it's all blue. That might be due to low blood flow in that part of the brain. Which means... Mayumi has an illness. Hmm... I have checked her hospital records. For the past six years, Mayumi has been suffering from dementia. Uh, that actually hits home for me a little bit. It's like my, my grandma on my mom's side suffered from dementia after having a stroke. Dementia? Symptoms vary considerably, but Mayumi appears to be afflicted by memory loss. She seems to be missing memories. It's funny how I was talking about missing memories earlier. I see. So that's where those weird comments are coming from. Can she run a diner like that? It isn't running. I mean, there's no customers in here. What do you mean? Matsushita Diner has been closed for eight years. Oh. That's why there's no customers in here. It's been closed. Okay. Huh. Matsushita Diner is near the Kapasaki District. It is not technically within the restricted area. However, after the chemical plant explosion, the number of potential customers must have dropped considerably. Before the accident, this diner managed quite well due to its proximity to Bloom Park. Patrons from Bloom Park would often eat here, being the cheaper option. But Bloom Park closed eight years ago. The customers stopped coming. And then, naturally... They closed. It's like they couldn't keep their business open. Does Mayumi not notice that the store is closed? I do not think so. Because of the dementia? Then that would make sense. Yes. I can't believe it. Well, is that all? I have to start preparing for the dinner shift. That that would also explain why she doesn't why she didn't remember Date when he came in. It's like we had already met, but she just doesn't remember. <sighs> this is this really is uh, hitting a a, a little too close to home for me. Mayumi stood and went into the kitchen and went to the kitchen. Date, let's go. Yeah. It's like they didn't, couldn't really learn anything of value here, really. 
Nothing in terms of a case, anyway. It's better that you leave things be. Yeah. You're right. So I, d I just noticed uh, something different with the map screen. The, Simiji uh, Sim the Simijima residence. We did not have this as an option before. And the Sagan residence isn't even on here. More than likely because Hitomi is at the hospital. I feel like I should go there last. So let's let's go to Date's residence. Hey Mizuki, could you take a break? Excuse me? How much is she lifting there? Oh my god. She's 12 years old and she's lifting weights. Seriously, how much are you lifting, Mizuki? Oh my god. I want to ask you something. It's like, Mizuki's gonna be a buff little girl. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> oh god. Now, now I'm just like kind of picturing her. Just like in like a year, like a year or two's worth time of her doing this, of being like all jacked. <laughs> uh, she's gonna be so buff by the time she's 13. <laughs> Mizuki, can you stop for a minute, sweetie, so I can talk to you? I couldn't even see this corner uh, in the other uh, branching point. I can't even look at this stuff here. I, I feel like I should be able to look at this stuff on the bulletin board. Okay, Mizuki, can you stop, sweetie, please? Mizuki is still working her her muscles. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, where's the officer who dropped you off? No comment. Is this gonna be like the other branch, and she and she's not gonna talk to me about anything? You're mad at me, aren't you? Zuki, talk to me, please. Not the fishery. Do the Ota and Iris one last. Oh, come on. Apologize to Mizuki. Nothing out of her again. Listen, I get it. I'm really sorry, Mizuki. Yesterday, I went to meet up with the Yakuza gang. The Kumakuras. I'm surprised he's telling her this. Remember Mama said Renju had some connection with them? So I went to question them. I kind of forgot. She she was there before Date went to the Kumakuras when we got that information from Mama. I kind of forgot about that. But of course, I couldn't take a little girl with me. Say, especially with what happened. You understand, right? Set down. I'm not afraid of any Yakuza's. It's... You should be. You're 12 years old. Come on. 29 kilograms? How much weight is that in pounds? 
I I'll have to look later. I'd make their hearts stop beating in three seconds. I d uh, how would you exactly do that? <laughs> Girls shouldn't talk like that. Hey. Especially 12-year-old girls. That's awfully sexist of you. Mizuki, sweetie, you're 12. This is why no one thinks you're attractive. Oh, oh. It's kind of a low blow. I'm attractive. It's like, that there's a good-looking guy. It's like, come on, Mizuki. Uh-huh, keep telling yourself that. <laughs> That's why you haven't had a girlfriend in four years. In four years, okay. So, he, in the span of time since he's lost his memories, he has had a girlfriend? My girlfriend is a ninja. You know, she's just hiding in the shadows. <laughs> a ninja? <laughs> Sure. So what do you want to ask me anyway? It's like, I already asked you everything I wanted to ask you. Unless I could talk to her more. Okay, Mizuki. Come on. Really talk to me this time. The same stuff. Okay. Where's the officer who dropped you off? Where's the officer who dropped you off? I shouldn't have to ask these same questions again. I told her to go home. And she just went. I said I would call her to check in. Did you? Okay. Why are you disappointed? Did you want to meet her? <laughs> That's not like that. It's like, I, I love this look on Dante's face. It, it's like, I, I, I think out of all the looks on his face, this one makes me laugh the most because it, it just looks so like, <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's, it's that kind of face. <laughs> you wanted to see her boobs? <laughs> <laughs> Your silence speaks volumes, Dante. <laughs> I thought you were more into small boobs, pervert. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I like big boobs too. <laughs> Tata, <laughs> let's not continue this uh, train of thought with a 12 year old. Come on. And a 12 year old girl at that. Uh. I suppose you are what they call a tit man. <laughs> I. Tit. Breast, yeah. <laughs> anyway, oh my god. Things got really derailed there, but that was f funny as hell. Oh my god. <laughs> Okira Fishery is a company Grandpa made. I don't think Daddy had anything to do with it, though. I don't think so either, but someone had access to it. Grandpa died 17 years ago. Someone else is running that company now. They aren't family. They aren't. Okay. Yeah, what kind of person was your grandpa? I never met him. He died before I was born. Hmm. But Daddy did tell me stories. Are they good stories? What kind of stories? Back when Grandpa was in Great Grandma's tummy? Yeah? Where is this going? She was on a passenger ship that got shipwrecked in a storm. Hmm. She had to have the baby out on the ocean. 
She's like really getting into telling this story. <laughs> On the ocean. Yep. And then Grandpa was raised by dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. What? Raised by dolphins? <laughs> that's like that's like Tarzan being raised by apes. <laughs> it's like what? did your grandpa swim with the dolphins then? <laughs> oh my god. Huh? By the time he was 10, he was catching fish with his bare hands. I mean, I could believe that. And then Grandpa got up on land and learned language and culture and stuff. All right. <laughs> and then he decided to start up Okiura Fishery. <laughs> Date and Iba are just speechless. Sounds like a tall tale. It, it does sound like a tall tale, yes. <laughs> yeah, Grandpa was a legend. It's like she's smiling about it. So she must have some pride in her family name, in her grandpa. <laughs> All the fishermen and sailors respected him. Hmm. That can't be true. But there's a part of me that's thinking, maybe. After all, Mizuki herself seems superhuman. With how much she can lift? <laughs> I believe her grandpa was an incredible man. I'm sure he was. I mean, she... She seems very, you know, full of pride about her grandfather. Even though that she never met him. I mean, I'm... I'm kind of the same way, actually. I mean, like, my name, Anton, I was named after my great-grandfather. And, yeah, he died w way before I was born. But, you know, I decided to go by his name. I mean, it, when I say that, Anton is my middle name. It's like, Learning a little bit about me here. Yes, Anton is my middle name. So it's, it was a choice that I made many, many years ago because I just eventually got very curious about my great grandfather. So it's like, I have a lot of respect for him, even though I never met him. So it's like, I, I feel a certain kinship to Mizuki in that respect. And finally, about Ota and Iris. I saw the video. The one at 3 a.m. last night. You did. Ota is amazing. I'm changing my mind about that guy. <laughs> Ota's out of intensive care. Iris is still... No. Oh. But I know she'll be okay. Iris's surgery will definitely be a success. You stay positive, even if there's no reason to be. It's like you can be positive too, Mizuki. It's one of your good qualities, Date. There's a compliment. <laughs> Thank you, Mizuki. What? It's like she just gave you a compliment, Date. Come on. I believe it. Thank you. Iris is going to be just fine. Yeah. Let's be positive. Let's believe everything is going to turn out all right in the end. All right. Well, I, I guess. I guess that's it. Say goodbye. Thanks for talking with me, Mizuki. Yeah. I got a little, a little personal with her. So I got, I'm glad, I'm glad I came here to talk to her. It was helpful. Was it? 
Yes, Ima, it was. I have to continue the investigation, so... Wait, you're leaving me again? For a little while. It's like, uh, it's like, Date's a busy man. It's like, he has to... It's like, come on, Mizuki. You know I'm a cop. So, it's like, bear with me, okay? I'm coming with you. Again with this. <laughs> Mizuki, I don't know if that's a good idea, sweetie. No. Why? I can't involve you. This might be dangerous. It is especially with what has been going on so far. It's okay, I'm strong. Yes, you are. It's like you just showed me that by lifting 29 kilograms, however and however much that is in pounds. It's like you're clearly physically strong enough to do that, but at the same time, you're 12. I need to protect you. Stay put. You know how strong I am, right? You were the one who knew how special I was before anyone. It was one year ago. I noticed something strange when Mizuki came home from school. Hey, what happened? All scuffed up there. Who did this to you? Yeah, I'll tell you who, who or what or. It's like, oh, she, she looks like she has a cut on her lip there or something. I mean, it's like she's a bit spot of blood at the corner of her mouth. Some kids at school. Some kids. By some kids, uh, how many exactly? Five or six of them. Five or six? They said I was a weirdo because I don't live with my mom and daddy. I, what's so weird about that? And they teased me. And I got mad and... You hit all of them? I told them to go away and they hit me. Tell me their names. I'll teach the little punks a lesson. Hmm. Date, wait. Adult intervention will not solve this problem. Yeah. Mizuki has to deal with this problem herself. It's like, what Date should only do is... provide advice. Mizuki, come on. It's time to train. So he's the one who got her into weightlifting? What? I'm gonna teach you how to kick their asses. We're starting right now. Get ready. Hmm. Why the shrine? Huh. Took her to a shrine, huh? A shrine is the perfect place for special training. It is? I mean, it is. <laughs> you feel better when you train in quiet, serene places like this. Sure, whatever. First, I am going to teach you four secrets to becoming stronger. It's like he's starting to sound like a samurai again. <laughs> Follow these four rules, and you will acquire power beyond your wildest dreams. Date, are you playing a character or something? It sure sounds like it. <laughs> I'm not Date. While we're in training, I am Master. <laughs> Master Date! <laughs> Like, Mizuki is not amused. 
Uh. Let's see. Uh, the key to victory is to kill the heart. What? <laughs> uh, being quick is to act. Being quick to act is crucial. Your everyday life is of dire importance. Mental preparation is important. Mental preparation is very important. Let's go with that first. In a fight, you must first be victorious in your mind. Like thinking I'm not gonna lose? In a manner of speaking, yeah. Exactly. I do the same mental preparation before going to a strip club. Oh my god. Before I go in, if I tell myself that they're all out of my league, then they will be. <laughs> Mizuki's face when he said that. <laughs> He's like, eh? What? <laughs> the mental fight has begun the moment I put my hand on the door. Oh my god. Yeah, I see. <laughs> okay, <laughs> she's already getting into this. <laughs> Actually, no. That's stupid. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, being quick to act is crucial. Mizuki, do you know how to win any fight against any opponent? Um, don't get in a fight in the first place? Exactly. That's exactly it. That is a respectable answer, but no. But of course, that's not where they're going with this. The way to win any fight is this. Hit them first, and hit them hard enough to finish them. I kinda get it, but... Of course. I'm not saying that's how you should behave. But thinking about this will make a big difference in a real fight. Yeah, okay, I get it, but... Seriously, Date, are you, like, acting or something? <laughs> not Date, Master. It's like humor, Mizuki. <laughs> uh, let's see. Your everyday life is of dire importance. What? Why? Because it must be! <laughs> the best training you could ever have is to be mindful during your everyday life. Diet and exercise form a strong body. And if you are always maturing intellectually and emotionally, you will always be able to anticipate your enemy's first move. I get it. Yeah. But you're so messy! Does that mean you can't fight? <laughs> I mean... We know he can fight. But... At this point in time, did... Mizuki... Did Mizuki not know that he could actually fight? Hark, the blowing of the wind through the trees. And now Dante is just kind of going all Shakespearean on me. <laughs> Hark, the blowing of the wind through the trees. <laughs> you can't just say something cool to avoid my question. <laughs> Yet he did. The key to victory, victory is to kill the heart. Like, when you get into a fight, aim for the heart? Not necessarily. No, it's the opposite. You must kill your own heart, Mizuki. What? What do you mean? So, uh, I'm trying to decipher what he means by that. If you are going to fight, you must suppress any mercy or emotional attachment. Okay, that makes a little more sense. If you have even a mote of sympathy within you, 
it will be impossible to fight to your potential. Do not think of your opponent as a man. Think of them as a target, a punching bag or a board. Just a punching bag? Huh. Anyway, practice these four truths and you will get stronger. This sounds like a scam. <laughs> believe in me. Like, believe in me as I believe in you. If you do as I say, you'll be thanking me in time. Are you sure? And how about we do a baseline test? Show me what you've got. Huh? How? Hit that pole over there. Uh, let's see. How about you throw a punch? I can guess your strength from that. If you say so, I'll give it a shot. She gonna punch him? First, close your eyes and concentrate. Like this? Exactly. Then, punch forward! Channel your inner chi! Woo! Okay! Huh? <laughs> that phase of Dante's, oh my god. What was that? <laughs> that was... I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> it was like... What was that, like a wind power? He's like, WAAA! <laughs> Um... You don't have to be nice. I know I'm weak. It's like, with what just happened there, you are not weak, Mizuki. It's like, Doctor is just speechless. <laughs> and Aima. Hey, by the way, did you swing back at those bullies? Like she, I bet she did. No, I didn't do anything. No, she didn't. There were a bunch of them. I didn't think I could. It's like sounds like she under uh, underestimated her ability to fight back. I see. She doesn't know her own strength. Yeah. I suppose not. <laughs> Mizuki. Let's just say I think you should be more confident in yourself. Really? But never ever strike your master. That is a must. <laughs> yeah, you're right. In fact, you're so strong you scare me sometimes. I mean... She is, she's strong physically and mentally. It's like she's, she's quite a remarkable girl. Well then? No, I can't take you with me. Why not? Because. It's like you have to give a reason, Date. You can't just say because. I took responsibility for you. I promised Renju. I can't put you in danger. There we go. That's not fair. Bringing up daddy. It's like, sorry, Mizuki. Iris and Ota feel the same way. They don't want you hurt either. It's like, and look what happened to them. You have to understand, Mizuki. If I need your help, I'll let you know when the time comes. Yeah. Really? Yes. Promise? Promise. I promise. Let's go, Iva. Where to? Well, I think this is a good place to stop for now. And we got some interesting... Uh, Memories of the past here, especially with Mizuki. I mean, she 
she keeps surprising me. <laughs> I mean, it's like, seriously, what was that, like, force that just exuded from her when she did that punch? It's like, where did that come from? Granted, she's a really remarkable girl, but still, it's like, where did that come from? It's like, what, what is it about her family and those tied to her? It's like, so far this game, the her parents and those around her seem to be so important to the story so far is now I just have this like kind of crazy thought that maybe these murders all have all center around Mizuki but in such a way that they're not uh, like caused by her but caused by someone like her the the cogs in my head are really turning so it's like with this little backstory about her grandfather it, even though it may seem embellished maybe there is actually some truth to it and with that memory of the past there with that punch it's like I'm not at this point I'm not ruling anything out. It's like maybe it is someone who is like Mizuki who is killing those closest to her. I don't know. But it's it's a theory. <laughs> it's like that's all it is at this point. Whether they're true or not, I'll find out in due time. Anyway, I'll stop it here for the time being. So I hope you all enjoyed watching, and thank you all for watching as well. And if you enjoyed the video and want to see more, like, favorite, and claw that subscribe button to become part of the pack. And as always, everyone, I hope you all have a wonderful day or night, wherever you may be.